today we're going to head back to 1975 when this cookbook was first published, put out by a little commune called The Farm that was founded in 1970 right here in Tennessee. So we're actually going to do two recipes out of this. You'll see why as I'm cooking, because they are related to one another. And one of them sounds really interesting. I've never tried to make uh, vegetarian cheese in this manner. So that's gonna be kind of a new adventure. We'll see how that tastes. I've already got all of my ingredients out and ready. I've got my soybeans, they are already cooking. So let's go ahead, turn this camera around, get started. And while we do our cooking in the voiceover, I will tell you a little bit of history about this particular commune. So let's go ahead and join the revolution. Welcome to the voiceover. All the ingredients and the directions for how to make these will be in the description box below the video. And now, let's head on out to a commune. The farm in Lewis County, Tennessee, near the town of Summertown, was founded by Stephen Gaskin around 1971 with 300 other hippies. They came to Tennessee from the Haight-Ashbury area in San Francisco, and if that sounds familiar, that's because Haight-Ashbury was the absolute epicenter of hippie culture from the late 60s into the early 70s. As you might imagine, the farm had a rough beginning. They purchased 1,064 acres in Middle Tennessee, and then later purchased another 750 acres. In the beginning, they took on vows of poverty, owned no other personal possessions other than their clothing and tools, and did not use artificial birth control, alcohol, tobacco, or any kind of man-made psychotropics. They started out living in converted school buses and even army tents. However, they soon set to work building larger homes but sometimes had to live with up to 40 people under one roof. As far as spirituality, they had beliefs that now would be seen as part of the New Age movement, in which there was a spiritual dimension and a universal brotherhood. They also took on vows of veganism, believing that if everyone became a vegetarian or a vegan, there would be enough food to go around and no one in the world would be hungry. And having over 1,700 acres of fertile farmland, they were able to grow much of their own food, especially soybeans, which is featured heavily in the Farm Vegetarian Cookbook. They described the cookbook as the family cookbook, because it features the recipes of the over 1,100 residents that were living on the farm at the time of its writing. And now they did have a few setbacks. Stephen Gaskin believed that marriage was a sacred act and the group started practicing something called group marriage or more specifically the four marriage system. However, this caused a lot of problems and none of the plural marriages survived for more than 10 years, and that practice was soon given up. Gaskin's wife, Ina May, became famous in her own right after founding a midwifery school at the farm, writing several books and giving lectures and conferences about the importance of having a natural childbirth. She's dedicated much of her adult life to advocating for safe and woman-centered childbirth methods. And some of her methods have even found their way into delivery rooms and hospitals. It wasn't all roses, though. Because they didn't turn people away who needed help, their resources quickly became taxed. They also didn't have electricity or sufficient sewage infrastructure which led to Giardia outbreaks. Because of these financial strains, 
many people ended up leaving, and Stephen Gaskin was challenged in his leadership. Each person was then required to support themselves with their own income. This caused many more to leave. However, they didn't give up. And now the population hovers around 200 people. They live debt-free and actually have their own businesses. They're now what could be called a type of eco-tourism, having built an eco-village training center to teach new technologies like solar energy and biofuels. Today, most of the residents are of the baby boomer hippie generation, many of whom who have lived on the farm for most of their lives. But recently, there's been an interest in the younger generations for joining this commune. And so, if you are interested in joining, you can visit during one of their biannual farm experience weekends to see if that's the kind of lifestyle for you. And now let's celebrate their 50 years of existence by dressing up these soy burgers and giving them a taste test. All right, let's go ahead and try this uh, 1975 soy burger. I'm really excited for it. Let's see. If I can get my mouth around it. I know. The bun's a little big. No. Okay, now wait a minute. Mmm. It's, it's really messy. <laughs> okay, we're back. We had to get a napkin break. Um, because <laughs> it's really messy. That still ends me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is really messy. Um, I was fully prepared because now this is kind of an involved recipe I thought yeah it took a little bit of time um I dirtied a ton of dishes doing this and as I was making it I was sitting there thinking you know we have Boca burgers now we have Beyond burgers now we've got Morningstar we've got Dr. Prager feels like it's come a long way. Yeah, probably. we've got like yeah. all these things. It's like, oh, is it really? Like, I'm going to have to put in my review that in light of the fact that we have all these products, it's probably not worth your time to make this. And then <laughs> I tasted it. It is really good. Like, oh I my don't know. gosh, I had low yeah. hopes for this, guys. I really <laughs> did. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and I'll give some of my reasons why uh, in a little bit, but not gonna lie, I don't know if I could buy Boca or Morningstar again after having these. Yeah. And you know what? It is some work, um, but... You get a lot out of it. You do get yeah. a lot. You get a book. I think if you had a day mm -hmm. where you could make these, bake them, or, you know, fry them, freeze them and then you can just pull out what you want throughout the week yeah. that's where i think this recipe is going to shine you're not going to want to do this you know coming home from work no, you know after no. a long day you're not going to want to do that if you've got the time to prep yes that's when you want to do it this would be perfect because if you're buying those okay i mean dr prager's is probably my least favorite <laughs> out of all of them because they're so mushy and everything on the inside this solves the mush problem by rolling them out and it also it just tastes a hundred times better it I'm just really gonna good. put I mean, it out don't there don't get me wrong like I, I think it like it doesn't taste like I expect a burger to taste no it's not it's not a beef burger substitute no but it it tastes I mean it like it tastes really good in its own right like mm -hmm. it's like it's like right. not necessarily like if you don't expect it necessarily to taste like a burger. Right. But it still tastes really good. And we have had, like, I mean, we've had homemade other ones before. Yeah. That weren't this good. Yeah. We've had store-bought vegetarian burgers that Definitely aren't, not aren't this, this good. good. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, like you said, I wasn't expecting something from this long ago 
to have been able to create yep. that kind of flavor that actually is really good. Yes, and the the cheese. Yeah, yeah. I I would be perfectly fine not having cheese again if I knew I could eat it. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah. on Using a cheese. Using this on, as a substitute. Yeah, yeah, this is a good substitute, yeah. guys. I'm not kidding. The recipe is spot on. Now, you're getting the umami that you would normally get from cheese. Yeah. You're not going to get like your, oh, this is definitely cheese. I mean, it's you not know, it's like not... stringy. It doesn't have that right, quite right. the same consistency, but it still has But the recipe, the... the book does fix that. Oh, really? Yeah, they have a, a pizza cheese oh. recipe in here that'll make it stretchy and stringy. So I thought that was kind of cool. So maybe you do get the consistency at different Yeah. Know, but... But I'm it's a, good. Yeah, I'm I'm per, and I would say I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you're a vegetarian and you've got some beef eating friends, if you invited them over for lunch and you served them this, I don't see how they would be mad at it. No. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, you know, it's it's not going to be beef, but you don't care because it's in, still really good. I think it tastes yeah. better. Yeah. In all honesty, yeah. I really do. I mean, just with to, the seasonings yeah. and stuff, you get yeah. more flavor than you do just your standard beef like, patty. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to definitely like dress up your beef patty. Right, right. To equal this flavor. Yeah. Yeah. So I am really excited about this because I can see us keeping this in our food prep repertoire. Yeah. And keeping these because I've got you know a whole batch back here. I can see putting it in the freezer yeah. and definitely making these again, again yeah. and again. I mean, re man, I'm yeah. just really I'm shocked. I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Um, because I had, in flipping through this cookbook, you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s, um, you know, my dad and mom liked frequenting health food stores mm. and stuff, and we would try different foods and, you know, different supplements and stuff like that. Um, I, I've been used to the foods from that time period, right. right? You know, and the recipes from that time period. I looked through this and I was like, oh, okay, it's not really anything new. It's not groundbreaking. Um, it's not, you know, if, if you've been in the vegetarian sector for a while, right. you're going to already be familiar with a lot of these recipes, especially like, um, the TVP, which, you know, is texturized vegetable protein, mm. uh, which, you know, we used to be able to buy it in a big bag. Probably still can. Yeah. I, I haven't bought it in a long time. But, um, you know, it's TVP spaghetti. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like instead of ground beef and, you know, stuff like that. So it's not groundbreaking. Um, and I was prepared to say if you're already a vegetarian and you have been for years, you probably already have a lot of these recipes, you're probably not going to want to pick up this cookbook unless you want to see the nostalgia yeah. and you want to see where your vegetarian foods kind of started evolving from. Or you may already have this cookbook. <laughs> yeah, or you may already have this cookbook. You may have used this thing for years and you're yeah. like, it's great already. Um, but if you're new to the scene, yeah. you know, I would say... Your more modern vegetarian cookbooks, I think, already kind of, a lot of them I've noticed have kind of catered to the new era of a lot of people working and not having a lot of time to devote right. to the kitchen. This was a commune. These people had many yeah. helping hands in the kitchen to make light work. Yeah. Um, I didn't, you know, yeah. so we, I've got a lot of cleanup to do. Um, so I think you got to keep that in mind. Some of these recipes are going to be a little bit involved, including this one. Right. So I'm kind of torn on whether to recommend this cookbook or not. Now, I could recommend it solely based on this. If you're tired of Boca and you're <laughs> wanting something, you know, that actually tastes and actually tastes good, I would highly recommend this recipe and the, the cheese. cheese. It's really, really yeah. good. I would say based on this, the rest of the recipes are, are going to taste yeah. good too. That being said, you are going to spend some time to get it. 
Right, um, right. So it depends on what you what you have time for. Right. Um, that's a big part of it. What you have, the kind of stuff you have access to. Yeah. Um, depending on like what area Health you food live. stores. Yeah. I, I have a health food store in our town. Yeah. I was able to get soybeans. Some right. of you may have to order it on Amazon and it's a lot more expensive. Right. A lot more expensive. Right. Um, so you might want to keep that in mind too. I think I'm going to say the same thing I did for this cookbook as I did last week. If you want a nostalgia trip, it's got cool illustrations. It's got really fun black and white photographs of the original hippies in this co uh, mm. commune that are doing their farm work and they're cooking in the kitchen. Uh, it's got pictures of some of the children. It's cool. Yeah. It's got it's some neat, neat information. Yeah. yeah. It's so if you want a history book that has some good recipes in right. it then I would say pick this up. I only paid a few dollars for it at Thrift Books. Okay. So I'm not mad that I picked it up. Right. However, if you kind of just don't care, you know, about yeah. the whole hippie scene, if you're not wanting... If you don't like, have the time to spend, like... Yeah, um, if you don't have the time to spend... Experimental recipes here and there or yeah. whatever, then yeah, maybe If not. you've already been a vegetarian for years, you probably have these. Yeah. Already. Yeah. And you've probably gone beyond it. Right. So I, I think we should just leave it at that. Yeah. I'm glad I picked it up. I'll probably be using some other recipes in it. I'll definitely be making these again. Um, but you know, just keep the caveats in mind yeah. before you pick it up. Um, so, wow, okay. That's two for two yeah. so far. Um, really good recipes that we will be keeping. Pleasantly and, surprising. Yeah, yeah, and using again. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool for us. And as you know, this commune is still kicking. Wow. They're calling, they're, they're actually an intentional community yeah. now um, because they've actually opened up some businesses and stuff within the uh, community and that kind of thing. Um, they do have visiting hours. <laughs> uh, now bear in mind, they do open and close depending on what's going on right. with universal um pandemic that's you know <laughs> that's so universal can like health concern. universal situation <laughs> yeah um so you may want to call because tennessee has been fluctuating quite yeah. a bit with our cases we're going high we go low then we go high you know so you might if you watch this and you're like, ah, oh, I've got to plan a trip and go out there. Contact them first. Yeah. Make sure you know what rules they have set. Um, yeah, and if they're going to be open, don't know. Right. But as soon as this clears up and Tennessee is, you know, good to travel, <laughs> I'm going to try to convince this guy over here to take me on visiting weekend Make because sure. I want to see this farm so <laughs> bad I can't stand it. So... Stay tuned for that because at some point <laughs> in yeah. this channel's history, we're going to be planning a field trip out here. Oh. So stay tuned for next week too because we're going to go into the cookbook that for me started it all uh, and made me plan this month of commune cookbooks. It's kind of the Bible hmm. of commune cookbooks and I'll just give you one little hint. It was a lady that traveled in the 70s, uh, hitchhiked across the country from commune to commune to commune, collecting all of their recipes. Wow. And it's, it's, a, it's a really fun cookbook. I've really enjoyed it. So we're actually going to devote the next two episodes to that cookbook alone, just because there's so many communes to choose from. Wow. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching this episode. Hope you had a lot of fun because we had a lot yeah. of fun making it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.